Hey everyone, Emily here, and welcome back to the channel. Today, we're diving into the world of a musical phenomenon, Taylor Swift. How does she do it? Why did a singer with average vocal abilities become a megastar? Why has she been setting new records for so many years and transcended the music industry? It seems like magic. It's time to figure it all out. If you use the internet, you may have noticed that this charming girl with a fox-like face has become the most popular singer in the world. But even the word popularity doesn't quite capture it. This is truly a pandemic of Swiftomania. Chapter 1. Taylor's Global Phenomenon Heads of state beg her to perform concerts in their countries. Cities, streets, and stadiums are being renamed in her honor. Just recently, Swift became the first singer in history to win a Grammy for Best Album of the Year four times. Wherever she performs, there is an economic boom. There is even a term for this, Swiftonomics. Taylor Swift's effect is studied at universities like Harvard. People compare the experience of her concerts to a religious experience. The Federal Reserve System of the United States mentions Taylor Swift as a factor in the country's economic growth. Her world tour, Eras, was included in the Guinness Book of Records as the most profitable concert tour in history. A year before its completion, it had already grossed a billion dollars. Taylor Swift is one of the richest women on the planet. Her cat, named Olivia Benson, has a fortune of $97 million, earned honestly through advertising deals. Taylor Swift is an incredible pop phenomenon, concentrating money and resources in an unprecedented way. Chapter 2. The Secret to Taylor's Success Yet Taylor herself jokingly calls her empire a small family business. Today, we will try to uncover the secret of her success together. Only a very naive person would think that all of Taylor Swift's success is solely due to her singing talent. It's quite obvious that in terms of songs, her work is fairly standard American pop music with folk roots. But this video is not about her music. It's about the hidden reasons for her popularity, rooted in thoughtful pragmatism and deep understanding of modern media. Taylor Swift demonstrated this from the very start of her career. When she came to Nashville, the capital of country music, to sign her first contract, she told the producers that she needed to be promoted on the internet and social media, particularly MySpace. Yes, now it seems obvious. Only a fool would ignore the internet and social networks for promoting an artist. But don't forget, this was 2005. There was no Twitter, no Instagram, no Spotify. None of the platforms we are so used to now. Facebook had just launched. A 15-year-old unknown singer was teaching industry veterans about social networks and close fan engagement. This is one of Taylor Swift's most remarkable traits. She always stays ahead of the curve and relies on herself when it comes to her career. She's not one of those artists who lament how good things were in the past and how bad they are now. She once said, I remember when I first got a record deal. I went to Nashville and I was like, you guys don't understand. The internet is going to be a big part of music. I have a MySpace and I have all these followers on MySpace and these people listen to my music on there and they're like, what? All we need is radio and CD sales. Chapter 3. Changing the Rules of the Game In the future, she not only followed modern trends but also defined them and changed the rules of the game. Ten years later, in 2015, Taylor Swift wrote an open letter to Apple. She expressed discontent that, according to the rules of the newly launched Apple Music service, for the first three months of the free trial period, the company wouldn't pay royalties to musicians for their songs played by users. We don't ask you for free iPhones, so don't ask us to provide you with our music for no compensation. Taylor Swift reinforced her stance by refusing to distribute her 1989 album on Apple Music. She won this battle with the tech giant in a single day. The next day, Apple announced that it would change its policy and pay musicians during the trial period. Apple, which had ignored similar complaints from independent musicians, understood the reputational damage from a conflict with Taylor Swift could be catastrophic. And she knew they knew it. 
Apple's senior vice president personally called the 25-year-old singer to inform her of the change. In one bold move, she changed industry rules, earning respect from the public and her fellow musicians. Elvis Costello even called Taylor's letter a statement from a future president. Taylor Swift had a similar conflict with Spotify, which led her to remove her catalog from the platform for three years. And what now? Last year, Taylor Swift earned over $200 million from music streaming, more than any other artist. More than half of this came from Spotify. She won again. Chapter 4, Master of Modern Communications. The singer has proven time and again that she understands modern communications. In 2022, Taylor Swift topped the absurd ranking of the most well-known climate criminals due to the carbon emissions from her private jet flights. The CO2 emissions were over a thousand times higher than the average person's. Moreover, the plane is leased, meaning it's used by others as well. As CO2 emissions are a common target for criticism and shaming, how did she handle this story? Elegantly, Taylor Swift simply appeared at a New York Jets game. Soon after, her star friends, Ryan Reynolds, Blake Lively, and Sean Levy, also expressed sudden love for the New York Jets. By October 2023, searches for Taylor Swift jet were filled with stories about American football and the singer's fandom, rather than the playing scandal. Taylor Swift, of course, does not acknowledge any of this. But now TikTok videos about her brilliant PR move are gaining half a million views. Experts call it a masterclass in public relations. It feels like she is a queen on a chessboard. And the chess game she plays cannot be called Sicilian defense. Her best defense is an attack. She perfectly demonstrated this tactic in the story with Kanye West and his then-wife Kim Kardashian. In 2009, Swift was awarded for her video You Belong With Me. But Kanye West stormed the stage, took her microphone, and announced that Beyonce's video was actually the best. Of course, West behaved poorly and everyone knew it. However, the moment was definitely ruined. But the real war broke out between the rapper and Taylor Swift in 2014. I'll tell you about that a little later. At that moment, at the end of the 2000s, the singer felt that her place was being threatened. In an interview with Time magazine, which recognized her as person of the year last year, Taylor Swift explained that in the pop industry, stars are exploited while they are young and naive. As soon as they grow up and become harder to control, they are often pushed aside. Chapter 5. Reinventing Herself she believes this is exactly what they tried to do with her at the end of the 2000s. It's hard to say if this is true or not, but around that time, the singer decided she wouldn't let the industry replace her with another naive singer. She would replace herself with a more powerful, successful, and independent version. She began writing songs more independently, changed her lyrical approach to be more personal, and subtly included Easter eggs for her fans, turning them into allies and even accomplices. And she needed allies more than once. She understood this perfectly. The album 1989, released in 2014, marked her final break from country music and her transition to an absolute pop star. Hits like Shake It Off and Blank Space were everywhere. Swift calls this period her imperial phase. However, such popularity comes with a price. Envy from competitors, gossip in tabloids, and constant scrutiny of her personal life were rampant. Now, let's return to the war with Kanye West, which hit her hard. He wrote the song Famous, in which he called Taylor Swift a derogatory name and claimed she owed her fame to him. The singer was outraged, saying she never approved such lyrics. Kim Kardashian entered the fray on Kanye's side, releasing a video of a phone call where Kanye allegedly read the lyrics to Taylor, and she seemingly agreed. Later, it was revealed that the video was heavily edited to favor Kardashian and West. But then, Swift faced intense harassment on social media. Kardashian called her a snake, and Swift's account was flooded with snake emojis. Even in this situation, Taylor Swift changed modern media. 
Instagram tested a new comment moderation feature using the snake emojis in her account, allowing offensive comments and emojis to be hidden. The disappearance of these snakes from Swift's Instagram account was the test result. However, she wasn't laughing then. This time, she couldn't just shake it off. The singer disappeared from the public eye, left the United States, rented a house, and fell into a real depression. Her paranoid suspicions seemed confirmed. Her career was indeed under threat, removed from the spotlight through a carefully planned provocation. But Taylor Swift wouldn't be herself if she didn't fight back with all her might. She was reborn. I became smarter. I became tougher. She sings in the defiant look What You Made Me Do from the 2017 album Reputation. The main symbol of that tour and era was the snake, turning Kardashians' attacks into memes. Swift's mastery of post-irony and modern communication tactics, like memes and references, is unparalleled. In 2020, Kardashian apologized, saying she just wanted to protect her husband, especially because Kanye went so far. No rapper is going to call someone that they're rapping about and get their permission. He really wanted to, because they've had their issues in the past. He really did want to do the right thing. And who is the snake now? Chapter 6. Re-recording her masters. Remember I said that Taylor Swift turns her fans into allies? This was fully manifested in another conflict with her ex-producer, Scott Borchetta. In 2019, after her contract with his label, Big Machine Records, ended, she refused to sign a new one and moved to another studio. In retaliation, Borchetta sold her master recordings to producer Scooter Brown, who had worked with Kanye West. For Taylor Swift, this was a betrayal. She could have easily bought her own masters, but Borchetta didn't offer her the chance. At that moment, she felt devastated and didn't know what to do. And once again, Swift did the unexpected. She decided to re-record the album Soul to Brown. Once again, she rewrote the industry's rules. After her decision, major labels like Universal, Sony, and Warner revised their contracts with new artists, banning them from re-recording their music for 10 years or more after leaving the label. Taylor Swift's decision was fully supported by her fans. The new singles and albums became events, surpassing the originals. This experience was transformative for the pop industry. It was made possible by Swifties, as her fans call themselves. They refused to stream brands' versions despite the high quality of the new recordings. Taylor Swift's fans not only support her but also adopt her tactics. Chapter 7 closing thoughts. As you can see, relationships with fans for Taylor Swift are a fundamental factor of popularity. She has been developing them from the very beginning of her career and has never neglected this tool of promotion. Her difference from the artists of previous generations is that she does not draw. The plot of songs in her life, she lives her life in songs. And so she manages to avoid the most dangerous for the artist falsehood. Write in the comments what you think about this and how much you personally like Taylor Swift's music. That's all for today.